welcome back my friends I hope you're well it's, uh, it's almost midday where I'm at I'm about to lie down and have one of my uh, daily naps and I'm going to talk about cycles right now the idea of things that uh, do go around and around and what it is that we allow to go around and around and what kind of cycles are we in I, um, I recognize that it's a very structured existence and so we have to often fit into the cycles that are provided to us within the boundaries of our work and our family and our commitments outside of that. And they are to be respected for what they allow and create in our existence. But empowering ourselves with other creations of cycles I believe has a future to it more so than the ones that have been given to us in the past um, nurturing oneself creating cycles around that however we can do it however we see fit however we feel is necessary makes very good practice and in the relationship to our day-to-day -day lives, it can be one of the hardest and obviously therefore, saying the hard way is the way, the most beneficial. And beneficial in ways, especially when we look at some of the things that maybe we procrastinate on, that we um, might have as resolution as opposed to action. And there are certain astrological benefits, whether we're uh, cardinal, fixed, or mutable signs, in our um, state of being, doing, and thinking. And obviously there's more detail to that, but if you'd like to know more, leave a message below. The idea of our uh, capacity to fulfill our intentions is very much on the precipice of the biggest test that we are going to witness within ourselves being that no matter what happens in the external world we are still required to um, accommodate acclimate and to a degree definitely compensate within and this is um, and has been a focus of mine in practice but also in sharing and in relaying the importance of being able to create an existence that allows us to succeed uh, where we're willing to do the things that need doing at the time that they're needing to be done. So procrastination is not a factor. Laziness, however, is intelligence. And the intelligence of laziness requires us to have a, a very good understanding and inner standing, but understanding of the principles and facets of what it is that we are choosing to be more efficient about. And very much so in relation to the idea of sustaining oneself with food and water and power and energy and our own energy and our own time and relationships and connection and growth and evolution are all very much requiring things of us but we're not an unlimited resource and the older that we end up the less physical energy we have to waste and obviously you know like the old age saying is um, age is wasted on the youth so the idea of understanding and sharing some of these principles with the following generations is a vital aspect of engaging in more of an honest and open connection to ourselves, our environment and our necessities beyond our wants, desires and um, sort of more egocentric dimensions. The, uh, the cycles, the cycles of life, the seasons, the solstices and equinoxes um, the day to days the moon the menstrual 
the um, sacred serum. Everything has a cycle to it of replenish and deplete, of create and destroy, of light and dark, of earth and air, of mind and body, of intention and attention. And these are some of the, oh, I don't know, um, parallels, paradoxes, and uh, polarities that are not very well described in a youthful age. There's no education on them. In fact, much of what I sort of discuss is hidden from the mainstream. It's not projected. You don't see it in film or entertainment. Unless it seems a little bit far-fetched and therefore um, unrealistic, so not to be lived. However, magic is everywhere, but it starts within. And so creating cycles for ourselves allows us to build a relationship to some of the powers that have been lost over generations and possibly even lifetimes that allow us to be more sovereign and um, accountable for our choices which ultimately gives us a greater impact in regards to the choices that we choose and so again the cycles what is it that we choose to do so um, from a background in audio engineering and um, recording studio, production studio techniques, um, nothing ever kind of happened in my peers' world until after nine o'clock at night. So to even communicate and organize what was going to be happening in times to come was um, always well after dark and um, with a, a bedtime that usually was about 2 to 3 a.m. Uh, with young children to ride to school um, and be up and ready and swimming at the beach and participating in all kinds of um, important, esoteric and essential education. From about five, I, I was limiting myself with much sleep and um, my eyesight suffered. Um, but um, I would nap in the middle of the day. Now I've shifted that. I'm definitely more circadian rhythm. But even that, when life and light and love begins at 4 a.m., means that so do I. So I might be getting to bed earlier, but I'm definitely getting up consistently before everything else. And I appreciate that. It's a headspace, environmental space, and um, temperature, climate space that allows me to achieve the things that I would do for me. Some of those things are in um, nurturing my sustenance with the growing and designing of food systems. But before all of that, there's very much a um, journaling of dreams. Um, sitting with prayer beads, um, doing pagan druid rituals every morning to create the days that I would wish to exist in and, um, and to propel them broader than me to the, uh, the wider audiences as well as a few specific individuals that are close to home, close to the heart, close to the hearth. So engaging in our design of life brings great opportunity to find a commitment, a um, uh, sovereignty in ourselves, an understanding of inner strength, an understanding of inner value. Is it hard to do at times? Yes. 
Are there moments that I just feel like sleeping in? Yes. Do I allow myself to from time to time? Yes. Rigidity is not the answer. Saturn, the most rigid of them all, is not wanting you to punish yourself. It wants you to be yourself. And by being yourself in the most truest form, it requires a level of authenticity where you are more you than anybody else. More what you choose than what others choose for you. And, uh, and from that point, cycles. Because patterns become processes and become our character and become our priority and having a priority that is worth um, existing in and living to and maintaining is of great character and there's not so much of that in the world today it's looking for 15 seconds of fame with the 15 second attention span and um, one foot in and one foot out of any given situation whether it be a door or a relationship or a commitment to oneself or their surrounds so building the inner strength is a process that is going to be very valuable in a time ahead there's a lot of solar activity. I keep bringing the astrological aspects back because we are a rock in a void space that is subject to much greater circumstances than most of our day-to-day uh, -day existences will allow us to see. And for the most part, even if we were shown, and even if I have shown in the past, people generally don't want to detract from the status quo However, um, would people have made different choices in their lives had they have been aware of my information regarding the GFC two and a half years before it happened? Or COVID nine months before it happened in relation to the level of imprisonment that was going to be subject to the wider world? or the crash of crypto, which I've been talking about since the end of 2020 and pulled everything out of mine from uh, mid to end 21 and shorted the fucking market all the way down to engage in, um, well, gains while other people cried in their losses. Would you reference a different choice that you would have made at those times? Had you have wanted to have understood, in hindsight, what you know now? This is where a cycle begins. What are we willing to change about our choices? What are we willing to change about the knowledge we think we have, or that we hold an attachment to, as if we have a, a desire to maintain the status quo. Unfortunately, we are small fish in a galactic ocean. And um, a few of us have a disconnection to it all and maybe a knowledge base from past lives and this life and incarnations within this life to be able to see through the facade and smoke screens that are put as distraction, which ultimately is very valuable to those that are putting the distractions out there. It's keeping us in the current. We want to be more present in the future so that our current situation reflects where we're gonna be in that state of mind of future proofing our lives again cycles some of them we need to break some of them we need to create and for those purposes my life continues to be here for you there are many angles for us to understand that 
what we are told or shown has at some point become a fallacy, become mistruth, mistrust. And that is the lie instead of the life. But I'll add the free will for you to make changes, for you to change cycles, create cycles, create new pathways of patterns. Be conscious that you've had an unconscious which really should have been acting more like a subconscious, which could then obviously create a superconscious. But the collective unconscious, unfortunately, has just been unconscious. And if you're following the crowd, then you're going to get lost with them. So there's a different trail, different trail, different path, the path less traveled. The path that they didn't want you to see and let's face it they don't want you to see it because they're looking after you because otherwise just stay in the lane but that's not what you really know and feel so at some point we've got to make peace with the principle of the paradox of what we are told compared to it being of value to us like an upstanding citizen in a broken civilization. How broken must that upstanding citizen really be? And what are the rebels really telling you? Well, I keep saying, don't listen to me, but you're willing to make your own common sense approach of it. And I believe that we all have the ability. We just need to choose it prior to the choice being a conundrum that we can't escape and we sink with the ship or we make the choice based on your sovereign self and the future you that has designed itself as a new entity in a life leading to another dimension that's why we're here all three of me because it's community that we're building but first of all we've got to look within and yeah be careful of false prophets and you know find the reluctant messiahs which you can find plenty of evidence in relation to the processes of uh, those who want to be seen and those who actually just have something to say it's all flow and the Tao and love and that's enough for now. I wish you all well. Big times coming. Big solar shifts coming. Big double wave of solar activity about to hit us within the next six hours. Schumann resonance is going to go off the Richter scale. We may find emotional outbursts part of it. And with a lot of planetary activity in Aries coming up, including a blue new moon with an eclipse squared to Pluto, on the degree of detriment, the 29th degree of Aries, on the 20th of April, hello, we have, we have a future to be well aware of and decide whether or not we're going to participate in it or we're going to procrastinate in it. Until next time, stay well everyone. Much love.